Right, uh, in, in simple terms, what, we set, what I set out to do was test whether we could feed charcoal that we could get cheaply, and in this case a waste product from the manufacture of silica, pure silica from silica sand, and we, uh, we fed it to, well I fed it to the cows, to see if it would pass through the cows. I didn't think it would have any effect on the cows in that it, it's, it's not a food, but it's inert. And I thought, well, if I can convince the cows to eat it and they eat it, it'll pass straight through the cows. It'll fall onto the ground as a component of the cow dung. We already had beetles that buried the cow dung to a very beneficial depth, up to 600 millimetres deep, all through the winter period when the ground's nice and soft and they can dig deep, and I figured, well, I'll try it. So I tried it, and within a week, it was proved that, the cow, one, the cows would eat it, two, it would pass through the cows, three, the beetles were buried in the ground, then we had to wait a year until the next generation of beetles came up to see if it had any effect on the beetles, because the larvae of the beetles would then consume the cow dung that was containing the charcoal that the cows had eaten and chewed up twice and passed through the cow. Uh, and next year we had more beetles than ever, so obviously it had no effect. We've been, uh, everything we've done, uh, I've done, we've passed by an entomologist who was involved with the CSIRO in the importation of the particular beetle that we are using. and. He has said there's no problem, would be no problem with the adult beetle, there'll be no problem with the larval beetle. As it's turned out, he's been completely right. We're getting more beetles, bigger beetles. The beetles are healthy, the cows are healthy. But now we are analysing what has happened accidentally. We didn't set out to, but what has happened, we have re-engineered the soil and we are continuing to re-engineer the soil cumulatively and permanently. We are adding this carbon material, this biochar in the ground in an activated form, biologically activated because it's been through the rumen of the cow and then goes through the rumen-like gut of the larval beetle. And it's mixed with iron oxide in the ground and it's in a reactive clay material at the level that it's buried. And it starts playing chemical and electrical actions in the ground that are making the ground more fertile to the plants that are the pasture that is supporting the cows. So we're growing more and healthier pastures and it's opening up much more research. We seem to be uh, fixing nitrogen in the ground without the necessity to have nitrogen fixing bacteria because of the charcoal. We seem to be reducing the amount of nitrous oxide produced from the cow dung on and in the ground because of the charcoal component. We seem to be reducing the amount of methane burped out by the cow because of the charcoal in the gut component of the cow, harbouring bacteria that is actually consuming that methane, making more bacteria which then gets digested by the cow and makes more cow. So we grow more cow on less food. So all these, re all these results we're finding are agreeing with the scientific evidence uh, which has been developed for other reasons. So we're, we're not finding any anomalous reactions. Every everything is running true to what you would expect. And the catch is we're doing it economically and biologically and profitably and it's something that the cows like eating the beetles don't mind burying obviously the larval beetle doesn't mind eating it makes the ground full of holes and aerated it leaves the charcoal in a reactive form in the ground forever and we've done it four years now i'd love to be coming back in a century and having done it for a century i think we would be creating a terra preta type soil, which is a, a black earth in the South American parlance. And I think we're well on the way to doing that. And the fertility is increasing and the pasture plant species are 
changing. We're certainly getting more leguminous plants and less grasses, which is also making more cows. So we've completely stopped using any fertiliser whatsoever. In fact, the last fertiliser here was, not, it was 2008. This is now 2015. And the measured levels of all the nutrients have gone up markedly, not just stayed the same and not gone down. The pH of the soil has gone up, not down. The um, uh, water holding capacity has gone up. All the measurable parameters have increased to mean that soil is becoming more fertile. We're not feeding any hay, which is a major cost in beef production. And the cows, it seems, are using some component or the fibrous or the particle component of the charcoal as a form of fibre to slow the travel of the material going through their gut, which seems to be part of the reason that people feed hay. It's not just for the food value of the hay, because most people are feeding hay at a time when there's quite high food value in the pasture. The pasture's pretty green and lush now where people are feeding hay, and the hay is largely as a, as a bulk to slow the material going through through the animal, so allow the uh, more uh, absorption from the very green, lush material so that it doesn't go straight through very quickly. And it seems, though that wasn't our plan, that the charcoal is doing much the same thing. Um, so there are a lot of collateral effects of feeding the charcoal that we didn't plan on. So hopefully we find ways of testing more of these effects that have been alluded to in other studies for other reasons and we're finding are happening as a result of what we're doing. Originally this was purely just to test a, a cost-effective biological carbon sequestration system. That was, that was the plan. It's become much, much more than that. It's become soil engineering. And I think eventually we will end up with a type of soil much more like a volcanic andesol, which is a, a highly aerated reactive soil that is very light and non-compacted and has a high water holding capacity and a high cation exchange capacity and a high aeration and is nice and soft to walk on and grows much more plant growth. That could be the, the eventual result of what we're doing. How long that will take, I don't know. So just tell me again what you what you started out trying to achieve again. We started out to, well, I, I plan to prove a, a workable system of biological carbon sequestration. Which means putting, meaning carbon, putting carbon in the ground permanently, but without having to use a machine to do it. At a, at a cost of burning fuel and buying a machine and wearing it out and buying another machine and burning more fuel, I thought, well, if I can have an animal walk around the paddock and spread it out, and I can have an animal mix it with a biological activation, meaning yeah. cow yeah. manure, yeah. bacteria, fungal food, etc., and nutriment, and then I can have another biological agent a dung beetle, bury the whole thing down into the ground so it doesn't just wash away with the next rain. It's down there before the nutrients can get away and be in a reactive part of the soil, leaving a long tube down into the ground to get there. The roots will then try and follow that down to that depth, about 600 millimetres, and away we go. And if that can be repeated over and over and over and over and over again, after four years, we are at a point where many parts of a paddock would have had more than one cow pat in the one position and beetles digging charcoal down in a subsequent year from when they did it before. So it is becoming cumulative mm -hmm. and additional. It's going to cover the whole area. Absolutely. Eventually. Absolutely.